preparing for the interview. In this brief video presentation, we're going to discuss some basic guidelines on preparing to conduct an investigative interview. And of course, at the outset, we're going to try to identify before we conduct an interview, what are the goals of the interview? What are we trying to achieve? What are we trying to find out? And to do that effectively, we have to have an intimate familiarity with the case facts and evidence, including statements by our subject, as well as others who may have been interviewed as part of the investigation. Clearly, the more we know about the background of the details of the case, the more effective we can be in our interview. At the outset of the planning process, we want to think about what is the purpose of the interview? What are my objectives? What information do I need to develop? What issues do I need to address? And what inconsistencies do I need to resolve? Inconsistencies between my subject's original statement and a more recent statement they've made? Inconsistencies between their statement and the statement of another person who was there at the time, etc. So we're kind of mentally planning all of this out. At the outset of the planning process, we want to sit down and create a comprehensive list of topics that we want to cover during the interview. And under each topic, we want to create a list of detailed questions that we want to ask. Not that we're scripting the interview, because obviously the subject will say things that will necessitate that we go off in maybe a different direction to ask some follow-up questions. But we want to have an overview of our topical areas and specific questions on each topic that we're going to try to address during the course of the interview. Will the interview be recorded? Each organization will decide their policy as to whether or not they record interviews. But the policy, whatever it is, should be administered on a consistent basis. When we conduct the interview, we want to make sure that we have available to us all of the information we may refer to during the interview process, reports, statements, documents, anything that might be a reference point in our discussion. And in terms of background, the more we can learn about the subject, perhaps the more advantageous it will be for conducting an effective interview, such as have they filed other claims before with our organization? What were the resolutions to those different claims? Are there any court records that might give us some insight into the individual's background, et cetera? And one of the things that we try to do is anticipate any questions or challenges we may get from the subject as to the status of the investigation, uh, what's happening next, uh, how soon will they find out the results, all of those kinds of questions so that we can anticipate them and have reasonable answers prepared. Our demeanor during the entire interview process is an objective, neutral, non-judgmental fact finder. We're there to develop investigative information not to accuse anybody of doing anything, not to accept everything they say at face value, but to try to develop information to help us decide investigative direction. During the interview, we're always going to treat the subject with dignity and respect, and we're not going to try to intimidate them or threaten them in any way. We want to be seen by them as a conduit to resolving the problem. We want to be seen by them as the resolution to their problem. So we want to create that cooperative environment. Let me briefly talk about the structure of the investigative interview. In the opening, we want to introduce ourselves and let them know who we are. And so here's just a simple example of an opening. Hello, John. My name is George or Ann Smith from the ABC company or organization. And as you know, we are in the process of reviewing, and then you name the issue. Let's say it's an insurance claim, reviewing your accident. And I'd appreciate it if you could help me out on a few details so that we can move this thing forward. Okay. It's very positive. It's not threatening or not challenging in any way. And we use phrases that express our appreciation. I would appreciate your assistance in this matter. I would appreciate your help in clarifying some information about the situation. I would like you to help me get a better understanding of what happened. So we are presenting ourselves in a favorable, hopefully non-threatening manner, a conduit to resolving the issue. We oftentimes begin the interview with casual conversation. This may involve biographical information about the subject themselves, something about their job, how long they've been working there, their current position. It may be some event that is in the news. The purpose of engaging in casual conversation at the outset of the interview is to acclimate the subject to the interview environment and to give us an opportunity to establish a behavioral baseline or norm. Everybody is unique. Everybody has their own mannerisms, the way they speak, their vocabulary, how they look at another person, etc. So we want to establish a baseline for this subject so that later on when we get to the issue under investigation and we see a dramatic change from that norm, 
that change could be a significant indication and a red flag that we want to pursue that area of inquiry in more detail. When we're doing telephone interviews, we want to take extra caution to identify who the person is we're speaking to to make sure we're talking to the right individual. So you might want to have some questions in mind that will help you confirm their identity. Once we've done some background information, casual conversation at the outset of the process, and we now want to talk about the issue, we may use an introductory statement as we approach the issue to be discussed. And here's an example. Mike, as we discuss the issue here today, and then obviously we can refer to it, the missing money, your accident, the report that you made about your supervisor's comments, Keep in mind that we deal with these kinds of situations on a regular basis and it is important for you to know that we will make our decisions based on factual information. Now we don't expect anyone to be perfect. We know everyone makes mistakes and judgments now and then, but we simply would like to get an accurate account of what happened. So it is very important for you to be completely truthful with me here during this interview today, okay? A guiding principle that we want to keep in mind for the interview is don't tell the subject what you know. It's more effective to ask an open-ended question, let the subject tell us their story or their version of events, and see if that is consistent with what you already know from the investigative steps you've already taken. At the same time, we don't want to predicate our questions based on information that might be in the file. For example, it probably would be ineffective to say to the subject, you know, John, I see here in the file that after this incident happened, you told Mr. Smith that A, B, C, D. If he had lied to Mr. Smith, as an example, we made it very easy for him to lie to us because now all he has to do is say the word yes. It's much more effective to say to the subject, did you discuss this incident with anyone after it happened? Sure, I talked to my supervisor, Mr. Smith. What did you tell Mr. Smith about the incident? And then see if what he now tells us is what Mr. Smith told us in his interview this individual had told him to see if there's that consistency we're looking for. So in summary, in preparing to conduct an investigative interview, we want to be thoroughly, intimately familiar with all the details of the case, the case facts, the case evidence, etc. We want to prepare a list of topics that we want to cover and under each topic a list of detailed questions that we want to ask in the interview about each topic. We want to make sure to have all of the relevant materials available to us that we might reference during the course of the interview. We want to consider the use of an introductory statement as we approach the interview. We do not want to tell the subject during the interview what we know but rather ask open-ended questions that invite them to tell the story to see if the information they give us is consistent with the information we have developed up to this point. And finally, do not predicate your questions on information already in the file. Ask those open-ended questions. For more information on this topic, visit our website at read.com and we have investigator tips dozens and dozens of them, many of which will supplement the information we talked about today. And on this YouTube channel where you're watching this video, we have two other videos on open-ended questions, parts one and two. They will supplement and expand on the information we talked about today. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to watch this presentation.